sometimes we have four people that are positive outside and we have to then triage and sort these patients to see who will get to be seen first. The overcrowding at the Carl Hirschner Memorial Hospital's COVID unit is becoming so worrisome for the hospital's medical staff that they thought that someday soon they will simply not have any more space to fit COVID patients is becoming all too real. Head nurse at the hospital's COVID ward, Casilda Bowman, says patients are showing up for treatment much more frequently now and with more complications than when the virus first swept through Belize yesterday we got about seven admissions in a space of maybe three four hours um, so we are seeing a lot more people coming in a lot more people coming in with more symptoms than we were seeing last year most of them are coming in with shortness of breath and the shortness of breath is also accompanied by a low saturation last year some months we were in numbers of like 26 admissions for the month Bowman says that the high volume of COVID cases at the hospital has become so dire sometimes patients have to cope with the trauma of seeing another patient die or even witnessing multiple deaths. We have had patients where I can tell you have seen maybe five deaths mm. within the time they're there and so their anxiety level is extremely high. We have to figure out how can we help that person, all right? Um, Sometimes our best fix is try to move the patient out and put the patient in our next room. Yeah. Um, then what we're doing then is putting the patient in an isolation room alone mm -hmm. with his thoughts or her thoughts. And fears. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's complex. It is also complex for the medical and nursing staff who must also witness these people dying. For me, it's a real emotional breakdown when I have to deal with these patients do the best I can and they still don't make it, then I go home with all this emotion and frustration on my mind. It's really hard to deal with. Once I had Dr. Cruz finishing a, a CPR and crying in a corner because she did everything possibly could have done to save the patient and still passed. The connection that, that it comes from having a patient two weeks is a lot. You understand? Um, we see them, we talk to them, you know, we try to cheer them up, you know, the, the little we can do. And then when we see them go, it's, it's extremely hard. The situation is equally difficult for COVID patients who experience serious health issues, such as internist Dr. Atanasio Cobb, who got infected long before there was a vaccine as an option to fight the virus. I'm hypertensive, of course, I take my medications. I said, you don't know what is going to be the outcome. And that fear and that anxiety that begins to creep in you, that you still have lots of things to do, you still haven't done everything. Um, life flashes in front of you. Yeah, life flashes out in front of you. I said, you know, my children still need me. Dr. Fernando Cuellar, who is an internist, chides many people, saying they have become numb to the reality, perhaps because we are looking at weekly numbers of deaths as mere statistics, rather than otherwise healthy people who are dying horrible deaths. He has a sobering warning for people who are still being rebellious and refusing to follow the safety regulations. But where one gets dramatic is that when the light on park are the floor, okay, they beg for any oxygen, or they sit down in a house and did. Okay, hmm. because we don't reach rock bottom yet. Wow. Our numbers have not peaked. Our numbers have not gone to the bottom and dig, and we got more for go. If Wasara, if we not do what we're supposed to do as our Belizean community, which is a basic public health thing. Wear your mask properly, wash your hands, physical distance, not the crowd up, okay? Um, if you see some in the aisle, you, you try to hold back. You do your part. The virus has spread so extensively throughout the country now that there is only one assumption to make in protecting ourselves. Think that anybody who you come in contact with now has COVID. It has come to the point now that 
you cannot assume that where you go, uh, people are, are not infected. You have to begin to change the way we think that anybody who we encounter may be, may be positive. And more so, the people who are not vaccinated. Cobb is of the view that anti-vaxxers have no right to discourage others from taking the vaccine when they themselves have not sat at the bedside of COVID patients to see just how much they suffer before dying. Reporting for News 5, Marion Ali.